Okay, so these refrigerator problems are easy, too easy. How might they get harder? Well, well, here we go. It gets harder when they don't just give us the QH or the QL or the W on a silver platter. Okay, so uh, now we might kind of need to look inside the refrigerator at, at all the different uh, components of the refrigerator and really look at the um, working fluid and hey, what are the properties of the working fluid before the condenser? What are the properties of the working fluid after the condenser? And if we know the properties before and the properties after, maybe we can find this QH that's going to come out of there. So that's what we're going to do. So here we go. We've got a refrigerator using refrigerant. It keeps refrigerated space at negative 35 degrees. That's talking about this outside, this space, negative 35 degrees C. That is not talking about the refrigerant inside of here, right? It's not talking about the working fluid. That's just talking about the refrigerated space. Uh, and I think we're going to use this later, not today. Um, but I think it, it, you know, if the um, if the room, if it's spitting this uh, QH out into the room and the room's at 30 degrees C. We might use those later. We're not going to use those today, but um, anyway, don't get the temperatures of the air and the working space and the area behind the refrigerator. Don't get them confused with the temperatures of the um, that's, that's inside of the refrigerant um, going through these different um, devices. Okay. So, it's using ref refrigerant 134A. Uh, it rejects QH out through the condenser portion of the system. The mass flow rate of the refrigerant through the condenser is M dot, right? That's M dot is 0.05 kilograms per second. The refrigerant enters the condenser at a pressure of 1.2 MPa and a temperature of 50 degrees C. Uh, it leaves the condenser at 1.2 and 45 degrees C. Um, if the compressor consumes 3.3 kilowatts of power, so 3.3 kilowatts of power in, uh, then calculate all this, the QH, the QL, the COP, and we are going to do part D later because we haven't talked about that. Um, the minimum power, that would be if this was an ideal um, um, compressor. If this was a, a Carnot or reversible, we'll talk about that uh, later on. Okay, so here we go. Do you see that if we know the properties uh, of the refrigerant as it's going into the condenser and as it's going out of the condenser, we can use conservation of energy to figure out, we can use conservation of energy to find Q, right? Q plus W equals, well, uh, this is a steady flow device, um, equals uh, M dot, and really H is the only thing that's, you know, not negligible, right? Um, Remember, go back to steady flow devices. Remember, sometimes we have kinetic energy when we're really worried about velocities, but we're not worried about the velocity of the refrigerant. Sometimes potential energies, if we have large changes in height, those are going to be negligible. So it's our conservation of energy really just boils down to Q plus W equals M delta H. Right here at the condenser, there, there, there is only Q, there's no W, and so it's really M dot change in enthalpy m dot change in enthalpy all right so that is how these get these refrigerator problems get a little bit hard it's not that bad um it's just a little bit of a twist in here instead of giving us the q they tell us the properties before and after we get the delta h times m dot that's the q sometimes sometimes they'll do that over here so over here the um conservation of energy would be W equals M dot delta H. Well, maybe we shouldn't label these two and one, but the change in delta H. Or, or maybe they do it down here, Q M dot 
right? Uh, so, so sometimes they don't give us the Q or the uh, W. They give us the properties of the fluids right before and after it goes into whatever device that we're, they're looking at. If we know the properties before and after, we can find the H's. If we know the H's, we can M dot delta H equals Q. All right, so let's, let's look at this before and after. So let's think about this like uh, state one. Uh, if the pressure is 1.2 MPA, if the temperature is 50 degrees C, so you thought we were done with property tables, you thought we were done with all that. No, we're still using that. Uh, so from that, uh, you know, you go see, is it uh, saturated? Is it superheated? Is it subcooled? Hopefully by now you can find the enthalpy. Uh, look at, through the tables, uh, 278.28 kilojoules per kilogram is, is what I've got. Uh, but what if the pressure is 1.2? and the temperature is 45 degrees C. Uh, look through there. I, I don't have this written down. Did, did it become a subcooled liquid or is it still superheated? It just at a, a lot, at a different um, um, H. Um, this big change in H, I think, I think it may have been uh, subcooled now. Uh, but, but look at that. Okay, so I'm not going back over that. You should be able to find those properties, find the H, given the properties right before and after. So, the Q, now is this QH or QL? This is QH because we're looking at the condenser here. QH is M dot change in H. QH would be 0 0.05 kilograms per second. Let me think about units here. H2 was 115.82 kilojoules per kilogram uh, minus minus the initial 278.28 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, so kilograms, can't solve kilojoules per second. Kilojoules per second is a kilowatt. So this is going to be 8.123 kilowatts. Now the math told me this was negative. What does that negative mean? That negative means it's going out of the refrigerant, right? Because this is for refrigerant, right? That's the H of the refrigerant. The Q of the, the, Q of the refrigerant is negative. Yeah, it's, it's going out of the refrigerant. Uh, so anyway, so the QH is, we already knew it was going out, The waste heat transferred out is 8.123 kilowatts. All right, that's the hard part. Now let's go back to all those COP is CL over W or W is QH minus QL. Um, let's go back to those easier equations to find the QL. All right, I know the WN. I know the QH. How can I find the QL? W is QH minus QL. And I know this is 3. Point, where were we? Sorry, 3.3 8.123 QL is 4.823. All right, and then the coefficient of performance. All right. Now be careful when you're writing equations on your uh, formula sheet. Don't get coefficient of performance of the refrigerator di um, mixed up with coefficient of performance of a heat pump. Uh, coefficient of performance of a refrigerator. I've got a couple of equations. I'm going to use this one. QL over WN. This is going to be 4.823 over 3.3. Coefficient of performance is unitless. This would be 1.6, no units, uh, is the coefficient of performance right there. All right, we'll hold off. We'll come back later to D when we learn how to find the minimum or when we talk about ideal. What's the best this could do if it was operating between a refrigerated space of negative 35 and spitting it out into the room at 30 degrees C? So anyway, long story short, Sometimes we have to get the Q from M delta H. 
Or maybe down here, sometimes we have to get the W from M delta H. Or maybe down here, sometimes we have to get the QL from M delta H. All the conservation of energy boils down to M delta H because here there's no W, there's no kinetic energy, there's no potential energy. Um, also, it's um, a one inlet, one outlet, and it's a um, steady flow device. Uh, or, or down here, there's, there's only W, there's no Q, so it ends up being W equals M delta H. Okay, M delta H, you know, to get Q or W, and then all the other equations we've been using. All right, got it? You can do it.